Hello, Bots and Books fans, this is Scorp1701, and it's time to take a look at the weekly finds. Now, if you're new to this segment, this is a week-long toy hunt that I do, where I go around to all these various stores, and when I find something cool and interesting, I take a picture of it, and at the end of the week, I compile all the pictures together, and we can see what we got. And starting off with those cool little Funko Pops, this week at Walmart, I found the Walmart exclusive Earth day 2022 poison ivy and i thought this was a cool little pop well i say little but it was huge it was in the comic covers box which is all nice and plastic and you got the cover of the comic that the figure is kind of emulating there in the background and that was really cool and the box was made of recyclable paper which is fitting for earth day and earth day is at the end of this month so be sure to recycle <laughs> Also at Walmart, I found the What If Zombie Hunter Spidey, both the regular edition and the Walmart exclusive edition, which I think the Walmart exclusive is supposed to be metallic because it did have kind of a minor shine to it as opposed to the regular one. And you can see here the uh, exclusive one is kind of shinier than the uh, flat uh, regular one. And that is pretty cool. So if you're looking for these awesome zombie hunter spideys, check out Walmart. And down the NECA aisle, I found nothing. Nothing I was new down the NECA aisle. So... There comes a time when a man has to take matters into his own hands, and I scoured eBay, and I found the Princess Bride Fezzik from McFarlane Toys. I got tired of waiting. For some reason, Target never had it out, and I'd never found him anywhere else, but I knew he was out. So I did the deed, went to eBay, and found him. So I got him at a pretty decent price, around $38, which I think is fitting for a uh, deluxe figure. And this guy was huge, and uh, we will be doing a review on him shortly. But you can see him there, huge box he has a rock and a peanut in there and that's all pertaining to the movie and it's really great so anyway if you're looking for him <laughs> i would say try target but uh, he's not there so <laughs> try ebay or some other online retailer because you'll have better luck finding him there and for Masters of the Universe, the classic collection, I found a Jitsu down the clearance aisle at Walmart. And he was on sale for $7.31. And sometimes when you find items on clearance at Walmart, they're going to be just marked down because they have so many or they're not selling. Unfortunately, in the case of Jitsu here, they get marked down because somebody breaks into their packages and steals his sword. Don't know why anybody wanted to do that, but uh, the package was opened and it was taped back together and I did look at it and I could not see his sword in there anywhere. So without a sword, your classic Jitsu is $7.31 at the local Walmart. So this is exclusive to my Walmart, but I just thought it was a neat little find. And I want to put it out as a warning for those of you who are getting the clearance items that sometimes there's a reason they're clearance other than the fact that they bought too many. All right. Moving on, for Masters of the Universe Revelations at Target, I found King Grayskull, the deluxe figure, and he's in there looking all big and bad. He's got a couple swords, alternate hands, alternate head, and a shield. And, well, it's King Grayskull, and there were about three of these on the shelves. He ranged to about $30, so if you're looking for him... They have him at Target. Well, they had him at Target. Yeah, he was gone the next day I went in there, all three of them. So good luck if he's one that you're after. For DC Multiverse this week, I found the Martian Manhunter, and he looked pretty cool. And there were supposed to be two versions of this. This is what I would consider the standard edition. I don't know if the second edition is going to be gold label or if he's going to have a different head sculpt or a different uh, costume, but uh, this is just the first one I've seen, and uh, he looked really nice if you're looking for him also in the dc multiverse line i found the black suited bearded superman now this is different than the animated black suited superman that we've seen before this is an actual comic inspired black suited superman because he has a nice comic accurate uh, face sculpt there with a beard and his s kind of remind me of the kingdom come shield and he has a uh S on his belt and nice silver boots. So this was a pretty interesting 
variant of Superman, I think. Just not interesting enough for me to pick up. But if you're looking, he should be on the shelves now. And that's going to bring us to Transformers. And first off, down the clearance aisle at Walmart, we are getting Tigatrons on clearance for $21. That's about a $10 difference because this guy usually goes for $30. So if you're interested in Tigatron, check out your clearance aisles at the Walmart. And the next bit of news I found at my local Walmart is going to infuriate me. And I hope it infuriates you because this just drives me crazy. This is the Kingdom Blaster that has just came out. But if you look closely, you could see Earthrise Hoist in there. And I'm just confused at this entire setup. I mean, obviously somebody wanted to steal the figure, but why replace it with a figure that hasn't been on the shelves in a long time? So that uh, that's kind of confusing. Did they, like, bring Hoist from home and just decide to uh, switch him out and not feel as bad? It's like, well, I'm not really stealing. I don't know. But anyway, this crap makes me angry. And I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to stop it. I mean, with this, the exception of putting, like, spider locks on all of the toys. I mean, I've seen some Marvel Legends with spider locks and Walgreens, but I don't know. This is just annoying. I hate it. I guess it's how it gonna always be anyway that is my rant and i don't want to end the video on a sour note so now let's talk about the awesomeness that was the pulse fan first tuesday last tuesday that hasbro released which was a one hour streaming show by the hasbro team discussing all the new cool Transformers legacy stuff coming out. Now they talked about the comic book and they talked about video games and stuff like that, but really what we're all here to hear about is the toy stuff. So in no particular order, they showed us that they are going to be re-releasing the Transformers Siege Soundwave, but they're taking away the battle damage, so they thought that that was a cool idea. And this is the Soundwave that has yellow eyes, and he transforms into a space shuttle of a weird looking thing. I'm almost like a blaster, you know, you could like shoot him, which, you know, I guess that's cool. If you missed him during the first round of Siege, you can get a second chance to get him without so much crap on his chest. But I thought with the release of the Legacy Blaster, it would be a better fit if they re-released the Netflix Soundwave, which turned into a tape deck. But I don't make these decisions. I'm just telling you what's what. One of the next things they showed us was the Transformers Legacy Tarantulas. And I have no real knowledge of this character other than the fact that I believe he was from Beast Wars. And, you know, he could be a sidekick for Black Arachnia. I don't know. They kind of look the same in their Transforms. When you see him on the back of the box and it shows a little bit of that uh, new scan code thing that they're doing with this series. Haven't really got into that, but we will discuss it when we start reviewing this series. Because I'm going to pick up a few of these, but just not Tarantulas. They showed us the Deluxe Knockout, and he was pretty neat. If you were interested in this character, this character obviously made his debut in Transformers Prime. And he was kind of a cool little evil mad scientist guy who transformed into a car. And he comes with a big staff and, I don't know, again, wasn't one of my favorite characters, but it's good to see him. And I like the fact that they are branching out to all aspects of the Transformer universe and mythos to give us one line with everything in it so you never know what you're gonna get. Which would explain this Voyager class Jaxus. And Jaxus was a G2 character from the comic books, and he is now making his way into the mainstream, which I think is pretty cool because he was kind of a ruthless villain that they fought, and it was really cool to see him. Bigger scaled, which is good for his character, and he turns into a jet, so that is pretty neat. Don't particularly like having his red gun sticking out the front of his, his jet mode, but hey, you know, some people might like having that storage there. The Hasbro team revealed a new Alita 1 from the Deluxe series, and she looks great in robot mode. I don't like the tall shoulders that she has in the box, but they did show a way that you could take those shoulders and move them down, which made her robot form look so much better. The only bad thing I could say about this figure is I 
don't like the alt mode. It's kind of this beefy looking car thing. From everything they did with RC and Chromia, I think they could have just tweaked it a little bit to make it a little different, but eh, to each their own. I don't know if I'll pick up this figure, but if I do, she's definitely staying in robot mode. The Legacy Blitzwing made an appearance in the live stream and he looked fantastic in his robot mode. And he had his purple sword and his big purple blaster and his yellow head. He looked very G1 accurate. I love that. But then you get to the transforms and it's always been an unspoken rule that sometimes when you're dealing with triple changers that one of the alt modes is going to suffer. And in this particular case, I think it's going to be the airplane mode because the tank mode looks all right. You do have the front of the jet sticking out the front there, which isn't too bad. But when you take a look at the airplane mode, you have these huge, ugly tire tracks coming off the bottom of his wings. And that's just not aerodynamic in any sense of the word. But uh, anyway, I still plan on picking this guy up because Blitzwing was one of my favorite characters for one particular scene in his entire cartoon run. And when uh, we review it, I'll play that scene and you'll see if... You know, it makes you like Blitzwing or not. I don't know. But anyway, that is Blitzwing and he's coming. And then we had the deluxe Wild Rider, Stunticon. And we knew he had to be coming because we know we got drag strip. And so that's one of five. And now you have Wild Rider, which is two of five. And he looked great in his robot mode. And he looked great in his alternate mode. Now, unfortunately, some people have already complained that the back pack is crazy and i don't know i'll have to take a look at it when i get him we'll see but i think it's going to be a fun little toy to play with in any event and then we had the commander class motor master and this is one big mamba jumba i don't even know what that term means but he was one of them <laughs> And he looked great. This is a good looking motor master. He's big. He's bulky. He's got a box head, which all motor masters are supposed to have. His trailer turns into a battle station, which, eh, take it or leave it. I don't really care. I'll never do it. And, of course, the trailer also turns into the body of Minasaur. And if you look on the back, you can see the picture of Minasaur there. He looks huge. And... I don't know why they didn't decide to fill him all the way up with the Stunicons, but I guess they just didn't want to give you any false advertisement that any other characters came in the box. But it looks really nice. I don't know how the legs are going to work. I know you're going to be able to transform them and stick them in there, but I don't know if you can do the G1 cartoon look where the cars are actually on the back of the leg. But hopefully we'll take a look at that because mostly in the diagram it shows here the cars go on the front and the front bends forward so it's like the front of the car makes up the foot. But I don't know, maybe there'll be a way that you could switch that around. Here's hoping. And one of the coolest and creepiest things that they revealed on the stream was this Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. And for those of you who are not familiar, the Shattered Glass is an alternate universe where the Autobots are evil and the Decepticons are the good guys. So it's a topsy-turvy world, and this guy is just creepy. He comes in a standard car carrier mode, but he's all blue and red. He also comes with a separate semi-truck piece, which will give you a separate Optimus Prime, who is all blue and got yellow eyes and a red gun, so that is awesome. And then he comes with this ghastly skull face, and that is so creepy. You can see his like ears are all like bad ears. They're all jaded at the top, and then he has a skull face with blue metallic eyes. And if it creeps you out too much, don't worry. They do give you kind of an alternate standard Ultra Magnus head, which is, eh, it looks like he's got some Matt Murdock glasses going on there. And that is really cool. And for the most part, that was all the toys that they showed off during the live stream. But the thing that got all the attention with the live stream was the reveal of the Robeson Optimus Prime trailer. And they prefaced that with a little video, and we will take a look at that right now. Greetings. I am Optimus Prime. Hear this message. 
Decepticons detected. Come to my aid, Autobots. Backup has arrived. Let's go. Fully equip your auto-converting Optimus Prime robot by Robosin with the world's first auto-converting trailer and roller set. Weaponize and mobilize. Extending the authentic original G1 Transformers design. This new trailer measures an impressive three feet in length. Unleash the power. True to form, there is more than meets the eye as the trailer auto converts into battle mode, exposing its massive firepower. Stationed within the combat deck, the fully controllable roller awaits your command to explore with human sidekick Spike to engage the enemy. Man the rescue station. Seamlessly connect Optimus Prime and the trailer. Control via app or your voice for immersive actions and sequences. And enjoy an ever-growing download center within the app. Incoming Decepticon! Prepare for battle! Engineered with 18 servo motors, assembled from premium materials, the authentically styled limited edition flagship trailer completes the collector's edition Optimus Prime. Pairing together to create the most premium interactive set available anywhere. It's time to finish this. Backup is here. Optimus Prime robot and trailer each sold separately. So it was kind of a big fake out. They kind of made you think in previous advertisement that there would be another Transformer coming out. They had like pictures of cars driving down and you hear a voice says, All right, let's go! Kind of sounded like Bumblebee. But no, it is the trailer. And the trailer isn't a bad idea. I think Optimus always needs a trailer if he's going to be a semi-truck, which 98% of the time he is. And the robotic stuff that's gone into this trailer is awesome. I love it. It can transform itself. It can merge. It can stand up on its own. You got a little remote control roller that goes out. You got a little spike figure. That is cool. And the battle deck can twist around and you can, you know, probably make some sounds shooting. Got some lights on the inside there. When you open up the trailer, you can kind of see it at the top there. And it basically has all the bells and whistles that you would imagine that a company like Robeson could put out with a trailer. We've just put out the Optimus Prime. The only problem that I see with this, and please understand, this is a personal opinion, is the price is $749.99 for the trailer. Yes, I know it's huge. It's like three feet. It opens up it does all this stuff and that is great but optimus prime was also 749.99 and he talked he transformed he did everything that this trailer could do plus like a hundred other things you could program him you could move him you could design you could add voice commands the trailer in essence is just a trailer it's a big box that you stick on the back of him 749.99 in my opinion opinion is just too much to charge for this thing. Now, if you would have gone 300, 350, 4, I would have probably considered picking it up, but as it stands, 750 is just way too much for what you're getting here. And I'm not trying to criticize anything other than I can't afford it. I'm sure the company has reasons that they charge what they charge and that is their business, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be a customer of this particular product. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it isn't great. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy one if you want one. I'm just saying that for what it is, I can't see spending that much money on just the trailer. So please don't get mad. Don't send me angry comments. But again, that's just my opinion. Yours could differ. And if you want this thing, please, by all means, go try to find a place to pre-order it. And I am sure you will be ecstatically happy with it. And that wraps it up for this week's finds, guys. I hope I found something that you guys found interesting. And if you're looking for any of these great toys, some of them are out there and some of them are on pre-order. So you'll have to go online to get a lot of the Transformers. But if you do, happy hunting. And until next time, keep playing.